to where we will be I'm right going back somewhere. after this. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. We're, we're going to chatting. So what did you guys think? I'm a little underwhelmed. A little sad. I, I wish they did more. They, they brought up a few things. They showed off their transmog that we I hoped everyone got their Twitch drop for uh, a while ago. And cool, but you didn't really answer your, the good questions. Mounts? Servers? Like, what's going on? No, I don't think it's going to be a bad game or that they don't know what they're doing. It's just you could have done so much more. And they said exclusive. Yeah, and where the hell was the exclusive? What was the exclusive? They're showing off the armor? Telling us that you could separate it? Cool, transmog. Cool, yeah, right. But I see that they picked out certain questions that I thought were really important. What is the community engagement? What does the content look like? Uh, how do you deal with the servers? Are you going to have enough servers? So are there going to be mounts in the game? And they were like, we're not, we can't divulge that information. We're working on finding that out. And it's like, well, what is it? You can, you're not hyping us at this point. You're just blue balling us. Fucking come on. So they're being very hush hush about it. But at the same time, that is kind of smart because it's this idea that, uh, you know, the less you know, the more you mythologize, the more you, you, you create this image in your head about what this game is going to be. And it gets you really hyped up. That's what, uh, what is it? People... People really buy the hype a lot, and then after the game is out for a little bit, immediately the first day you start actually seeing a little bit going down maybe. And then after a month especially, you, it's just a, it was a one big whoop, and then, and then it will steady out. It will find its little flat line, and it will kind of, something like that. Unless you're World of Warcraft, where if you look at it from a month standpoint, yeah, you're doing pretty good. But if you look at it from a couple of years standpoint, you go, whoop, and just down since then. I don't know. I am really excited though, so I have I have some plans that I would be doing. So let me actually let me pull something up. All right, here we go. So I have a, I have a Google Doc here of things that I really wanted to do. I, I wanted to level quickly. Let me let me just increase this size. I want to level quickly, but I don't want to rush myself. Uh, I will not be caring about leveling that. I will just be screwing around in the open beta, trying to get my friends in on it and having them enjoy their experience, showing them around and being like, "Look at this! It's so cool." We may be walking into really high level areas or something like that. So when the game comes out, leveling quickly is not the highest priority. I'm going to go with the strength constitution build. This is just starting out. Later through the game, I may eventually transition into a dexterity constitution build uh, for PvP. So I, I do love strength constitution. I love the great axe. I love the warhammer and everything. But there will come a point where skirmishes, I feel like, are going to start becoming a little bit more important in wars. I, I think I would just do better with the dexterity build, like musket spear. It has a great amount of CC. You can use it over and over. Get yourself some distance so you can keep taking those huge-ass crits that person was doing in the video. I, I Though I'm going to start with strength constitution. I'm going to focus on all the gathering of pre professions. I'm just going to pick anything and everything that I usually see. I mean, you're, you're going to pass some stone and wood that you're not going to want to pick up. But if I see hemp, fibers, or herbs, I'm picking that shit. I'm going to pick everything I see, try to mine everything I see, cut down as many trees as I can. And I'm going to try to really focus on my gathering when the game launches. I'm going to do a little bit of focusing on smelting, stone cutting, and woodworking. And I'm going to put a lot of little attention into weapon smithing and armoring. Why is because at end game, I believe spear is also so at one point I'm gonna have to get the workshop up workshop workshop work shit uh workshop up if I want to I believe get my musket legendary musket, but the spear I believe is a weapon smithing legendary. So not only would I get my great axe and warhammer, I believe, but I also get my spear legendary from getting my blacksmithing up. Armor smithing is even less important to me than weapon smithing but it's still going to be something I focus on, then I'm going to be using the Great Axe and Warhammer. The Great Axe, I, I had so much fun with it, and it was broken. I won't even deny that. There was that bug where you can hit twice with one heavy attack that I will admit I abused the shit out of that, but it was fun. I got to clear content. Like, things five, six, seven levels ahead of me, I could kill them without a problem with uh, the extra abilities like healing yourself with your crits critting people below 30% health more often. Damn, that was easy. You just fucking, you hit them twice with one heavy attack. Both of them crit. You heal for a quarter to half your health. 
could really tank anything just with the Great Axe. That, and they say the Great Axe has an ability to tank and taunt. And I'm confused, but can I tank with the Great Axe? Can I have a tanking build where it's Great Axe Warhammer? Do I just switch around my gear that it's more constitution-based than strength-based at that point? Th these are the thoughts I have staying up at night, but I think I'm going to really mess around with strength and constitution, and I'll be making some videos on that. I think they would be a lot of fun. Uh, one of them may be coming out soon. I'll be just going over the build. I'll be, uh, actually, I could do that right now. Why the fuck not? So one thing, if you want to go to a good website. So right now we're going to look at what my build probably will be leveling through New World on launch. Uh, one great site to go to is, oh, here it is. Start building. Okay, so we're going to go here. What I'm going to do is we're going to use perfect gear. Yeah, we'll use perfect gear. We have 475 points. Right now, I would try to get my strength up all the way, just 300. I would not go past 300. With my gear and my points invested, I would just want to get to 300. Why? Because this gives me light and heavy attacks with melee weapons gain grit, and I get the 25% chance to mine an ore in a single swing. I think I will have enough damage there. E each of these little circles kind of gives you a benefit, and... A lot of people are going weird builds that they, they can totally do, but they, they're really, like, squishy in my mind, and I don't know if they're really going to last in the long run. Like, trying to use intelligence and strength that don't synergize well, but to each their own. Uh, I'm going for one main stat for damage, strength, and then my tank stat. With all the points I got left, I'm going to dump them into constitution so i would have about 300 strength and 185 constitution now you could do something like i don't know i could take out a little bit here see i can't even get to the dexterity no matter what i do so i would just put it for the extra health i would just try to get the extra health Take the 300 strength and the 185. And here are our bonuses. This is why I love this uh, place. It's the world worldforge.gg. I would get a 5% damage to melee weapon light attack. I would get a 10% mining speed boost. 10% damage to melee weapon heavy attacks. So this is already... My, my weapon attacks are just getting stronger and stronger with strength. And that's the benefit of using Great Axe and Warhammer together. They just hit so hard with the strength uh, benefits like this. Mining encumbrance, so I can carry, I'm guessing, more ore. 50 stamina damage from melee weapon light and heavy attacks. So when people are blocking you, this does even more. My heavy weapons do even more damage to your stamina block. So I'm like, I'm just chunking through your defenses if I catch up to you. 10% uh, decreased in weight of mind or mind items. Huh, interesting. So that's that's different from the mining encumbrance. I have to find out what that means. 10% uh, damage to sun slowed or rooted enemies. This is when you use the war hammer and you stagger someone. You use clear out. You like, knock them on their ass. Pull out your great axe and do an execute. You then do plus t with all the bonuses to execute, which does more damage, the less health they have. Plus this 10% damage to stun slow to rooted enemies. You're just like fucking nurking them, dude. But you're not, you have no ranged. That's the biggest caveat. You're not ranged in the slightest. 10% uh, mining speed. Stamina regen continues while performing light and heavy attacks with melee weapons. Big. But I don't think there's much of a point to block. I guess you could block with the Warhammer and Great Axe, but you can't actually block ranged or magic weapon uh, attacks. So that one's not as much of a benefit. Yield increase when mining. Awesome. Light and heavy attacks with melee weapons gain grit. Now this is amazing. You know, actually, one second. One second here. So how grit works, grit makes it, so uh, when you get attacked, there's a chance you will stagger. And if it's a heavy attack, no matter what, you will get staggered. It's this moment that you kind of lose control of your character and you, your character does this little, this little, look, wait, I got it, I got it. It's like you're, you're walking, you're, all right, you're walking and you, you, you're here, you're here, you got your weapon and you get hit. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And you, and you have to get back up into your ready stance, right? So during that time, you can't do anything. You can't hit anyone. You you can't do what needs to be done. Let me pull these out. I'm not even using these right now. So I got my fucking uh, mic stuck on this. Shit. 
So grit, grit, yeah, grit is you don't want them to, you don't want to stagger. When you have grit, and this is what I loved about the Great Axe and Warhammer, but you're going to have to mess with these talents a little bit. It depends when you get to 300 strength versus when you're building before 300 strength. That's two different things. It's very important. Light and heavy attacks with melee weapons gain grit. If you're fucking swinging, unless it's a boss that does a huge stun, you're not going to, nothing's going to stop your swing. Your swing, it will go through, regardless of much else. I love that. It makes you feel tanky as hell. That's why I was like, wait, can Great Axe tank? Look at all these abilities. It's like heal yourself when you deal damage, do more damage, uh, heal yourself when you crit, and then increase your crit on lower health enemies. And I'm like, this you can heal yourself a shit ton. And if you have grit, you just sit there swinging at your enemies healing yourself from the crits you're dealing you just have to have enough health and heavy armor defenses in order to supplement that and a healer in case you get too low and you're not getting your crits off so it is a little rng but if you have a healer so that's what i was doing but with the bug and that your your second heavy attack with a certain talent uh could hit twice and then i'm hitting like say five enemies twice so all of a sudden i just hit i just had 10 hits basic hits in one swing and six of those are crits and i go from a third of my health to full health yeah that's a little broken it was fun it was a lot of fun uh 25 percent chance to mine ore in a single swing so there are things that's going to be awesome for leveling and everything but when you get to the end game uh one thing i would recommend is at, at level 20 i think it's 20 gold to respec your skills and it may cost Azoth as well. Every level after that, if I'm not mistaken, it's 12 more gold. And it's something like 500 gold when you're level 60 to, uh, I, I don't know what the math is, but I, I only heard like it was 500 or so gold, uh, when you reach 60 to respec. When you respec, say for a day, you need resources because you're going to be crafting. You would throw 300 points all into one skill. So like strength, why? Well, because strength helps you with mining. You can carry more. You are you don't get encumbered by as much. You can mine ore in a single swing. There's a 25% chance that right when you hear that, that, that good old, you get your ore. It's done. 25% chance right here. Let me, let me pull me down. Actually, sorry. Let me get rid of this death count and let me pull myself like over here for right now so you got you got your 300 strength right so this is when your light and heavy attacks with melee weapons gain grit but it's also a 25 percent chance to uh mine ore in a single swing while i'm leveling this is going to be really beneficial if you're like here's what i'm going to do when i have a time at level 60 that i need to level up other crafting and i'm not going to pvp or anything i'm going to take all my points and throw them into something like dexterity or maybe not dexterity but the the, the main two are strength and constitution constitution is the uh wood chopping so you're mining for strength but constitution you wood chop you have a 25 percent chance to chop down a tree in a single swing damn i didn't know they did 80 percent damage reduction when full health tanks are, tanks are tanky you get more yield when logging logging speed up here you got mining speed Lo oh constitution also it's a reduction on the dur durability loss on tools very important very important and i think whatever build you go you probably want 50 constitution for the all healing consumables last 20 percent longer that's very important uh focus gives you fishing and in fast travel time the uh, focus is for healers intelligence gives you harvesting speed yeah a lot of harvesting and azoth travel again and skinning is dexterity there it is skinning so strength will give you your mining dexterity gives you your skinning intelligence gives you your harvesting focus gives you your fishing it looks like and it also says when salvaging so you will be salvaging items for repairing they get an increased bit so heal that's for healers and then constitution is for logging going back to our bonuses here increases max health by 10 percent of your physical armor this is a main this is one big reason i going to be wearing heavy armor with my build even though i want you know some more i'm not going to be a main tank i'm more of like a bully bruiser but i will still be wearing heavy armor because the 10 percent 
at endgame can be a lot of health. And when you're getting chased down, and I'll show you later why it's okay to be a little bit slower with heavy armor and the speed reduction and the, the uh, dodge reduction that you get with that. It, it will be worth it when you use great axe. Uh, reduction on the durab durability loss on tools. Crit damage taken reduced by 10% and decrease in weight of logging items. So you get a lot of benefits with 300, 185. Uh, I would mess around with this because my argument is, yeah, you can, you can play how you want, but when you niche as far down as you can, that is when you create the best effect. Try to find the best synergy. If you're going to use dexterity, try to find weapons that scale primarily with dexterity, not secondarily. Like don't, don't pick, uh, let me think here. Don't pick spear and hatchet and go full strength and then wonder why your spear does so much less damage than your hatchet. You know, it, it's because your spear stri uh, scales primarily with dexterity while your hatchet scales primarily with strength and their secondaries are flip-flopped. So you'll still be doing great damage, but it, like kind of understand. So it, say you take a spear for dexterity strength and then all of a sudden you're taking ice gauntlet for intelligence and it's like, well, I'm putting all my points in strength, so my ice gauntlet's not doing damage. Or, sorry, in dexterity, my ice gauntlet's not doing damage. What's going on? Because you didn't have points for that. Or you're, you're spreading them out so much, you have three. Say you have strength, dexterity, and constitution that you're putting points into. But if you're doing that... You may get a you may get a benefit. Let's let's see here. Let's let's go let's go down to three three, and you can do something like this. So you have you have a little bit extra here, and where would I put it in this case? Um, I would kind of space it, probably like that, because you're not going to get to anywhere. Now you can do something like this, and so you have a split build, and you're still kind of tanky. You still have this crit damage reduction as well and your health from your physical armor. So no matter what, you're going to get health from physical armor. And you can use weaker armor, medium, and light armor. You're still going to get some health. It's just the heavier armor, the better. But you're still getting a benefit here. You can still do a lot of uh, damage, I believe. It's just, it's not going to feel like I believe you're going to do as much. Let's take a calculator. So I know the, for right now, before anything comes up, a secondary scaling weapon scales 0.9 with their primary stat and 0.65 with their secondary. While a weapon, say the great axe that only scales with strength is one. It scales one to one, one strength, one damage. If we take that idea, let's say spear. We want the spear to do, it's going to do uh, 170. If I understand, if I can think of this right, where's my, uh oh, I need a better calculator. Here we go. We got 170 times, uh, it will be 0 0.9. And then it's going to be, I believe it's an addition, not a multiplication in, in uh, damage. So we're going to have a plus. I may be wrong here. Anyone please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But we're going to have another 170 and that's going to be multiplied by 0.65. 260 no you're still lowering your damage and you can have 300 of one so let's say we have 300 and that's going to be times just one scale uh one point right well if you already think of that that's 300 points of damage so yeah you can spread out your weapons but you're going to be doing less damage in the long run and the thought process right Maybe that's wrong. Maybe there's a lot more to it, but that's how I thought of it. It's like when you're scaling for multiple stats, your damage is naturally naturally going to be lowered. 263.50 versus 300 with a, a single scaling point. And then on top of that, I think, yeah, I could put even more points into Constitution. I'm not going to get another benefit from Constitution, uh, like another bubble, which would be increased to armor, which would be fucking amazing because then that just scales even more with the uh, max health for 10% of your physical armor. So then increase that by 20%. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a lot of health with Constitution and it helps a lot. Now, there's probably a, a, a cutoff point. Let's say you put, hmm, let's say you put 250, uh, no, let's see, 200. Yeah, let's say 200. Let's say you put 200 in your primary scaling 
and you put how much do you get? One uh, 165, 165 plus 145. So you get like 400 and something odd points, right? Okay, so let's say you did that and you put 150. You went up 30. Let's go down 30. 140 times 0.65. Oops. Times 0.65. Right? 271. You're not moving much, but you did go up. Because you're getting more towards your primary scaling stat. You could go full glass cannon. You really could. But I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is actually start out maxing out my strength. And then putting the rest in the constitution. This, this is what I would be doing. With weapons, I'm going to be going with the great axe and the war hammer. Use and build. Use and build. Whoops. All right, so first the great axe is going to be my main weapon. I love this great axe. There's key things to know about it. First off, this heavy pull ability, heavy attacks with great axe pulls flows closer to you, was bugged. I don't know if that bug is still going to be there. I'm going to try it in the open beta. It's really easy to try out right away. Maelstrom is not that bad of an ability, but I am not a fan of it. If you want to know, this is more of the soloing single target page that has some, like with your basic attack, it really empowers your attacks, but it, it's not real AoE. While the Mauler Tree is really AoE, you're going in a dungeon and you hit Whirlwind and you just spam this Whirlwind, you're going to be, you're going to be doing the most damage in the group. So it depends on the situation. What I would do is if this is still bugged, I'm obviously going to use it. But if it's not, I'm going to use Mauler's Resolve. That's how I see it. I'm not a big fan of Maelstrom. I don't, I didn't have much of a benefit of using it. I'm not going to use it. Uh, so I would, let's go with Heavy Pull. And I would also want Enduring Pull. Now you may be asking me, why am I not going Whirlwind? Or why, why am I doing Enduring Pull? When you're leveling up right away, having grit was one of the main things that made me speed up because getting hit by attacks constantly by mobs slowed me down. I, I hated that staggering effect. It was so fucking, it's necessary, but it's so fucking annoying. So the first thing I thought of is I want to get rid of that, that stagger. How do I do that? And that's through grit. So later in our build, when we reach 300 strength, we don't need that anymore. All our light and heavy techs already have grit, but while we're leveling, it's really beneficial. Uh, I, then I would go back over actually into the Reaper tree as I was leveling and I would get reap. I would get charge. I would not get execute. I would fly back over here and get gravity well because I, I love to have my three abilities, but execute, even though it is, it does so much damage and it can be a great benefit i like the utility with reap charge and gravity well i have a lot of utility sacrificing some damage but execute if you don't go gravity well execute is a great second option you could go either or and honestly leveling up in the beginning you may want to go with execute so we can go with execute um i do not get anything else with the charge ability because it's uh it does 120 percent weapon damage that can scale up to 140 eh. percent or you can add an extra attack at the end of it or sorry to execute early with a right mouse bumper you're not doing that you're using the charge for mobility the these points aren't real necessary uh what i like to do is i like to just buff up my basic attacks and my reap so reap i like to get the heal and the extra spin attack then i go for things like this heal for 10 percent of the damage done with great axe against foes below 30 percent hell yes crit more often with your great axe when the target is below 50 percent health that's good that's really good here it is, when you make a critical hit with Great Axe, heal yourself for 10% of the damage. So not only are we healing when people are below 30% health, we're healing when we're critting them, and we're increasing the amount of crits, uh, the, how often we crit when they're below 50% health. Let's see here, I then would go with critical hit damage. 
So you can upgrade your execute, and actually I would recommend upgrading your execute if you didn't go gravity well. But when you have the ability, I would take Bloodlust. Bloodlust, you move 30% faster and deal 15% more damage when looking at foe, a foe within 15 meters. People get so pissed off at this. If Say you have PvP on and you're looking for people or trying to run away. This ability makes you faster than almost any other class. You can get away. And if you have heavy armor with charge and now this ability, this gives you so much mobility. Again, I wouldn't be using Execute. So, I would take that away, and I would be back in here, and I would have Gravity Well, and I would actually get the Fortify from it. I would get the Gravity after you pull an enemy. Let's see, what else would I get? You're not always going... So, I, I would fly back over here, actually. I would get Death's Embrace. I would get Frustration. So, this, this makes it so not only when pe they're below 50% health, I will crit more. When they're below 50% health, I also go through 10% of their armor. And if they're blocking, it increases my damage by 15%. All great stuff. You have one real floater point to go around. You can really put it anywhere. If I had somewhere to put it, I honestly probably would put it in Mauler's Resolve. So this is what my New World Great Axe would look like. This is, this is how I would build my Great Axe. Now we're moving on to the Warhammer. Warhammer, I have so, the sound effects for Warhammer are so beautiful. What we're going for with Warhammer though, more to really bully. We're bullying you. And we, it's not about really killing you. My great ax is to kill you. As you saw, when they get lower health, it's all about killing them. But my, my Warhammer idea was to mess with them i need space get them away i need to get close let me get closer to them stagger them you know that is my idea for new world so what i'm going to do with the warhammer uh, i would be in the crowd crusher tree uh, i see a lot of people like to get one ability over here but i don't know if i would really touch this tree much at all other than a couple passives so i would get all of these abilities i love all of them and in all honesty i'd level them all up there's there's some in here that i would change though because where is it yes here it is okay so i would level them all up there's a lot of great things you can do in here i'd get the uh whenever a target is affected by combat control they are slowed perfect that's what you want so in war when this ability especially the path of destiny and you're in a war and they're all climbing up to a flag they're all just approaching it you can slow them and you can stagger them and reduce all of the cooldowns of your abilities. It, it is really, really, really nice. Uh, actually, I would take away this one point, swing away. And I would uh, then put it here. Then I would get two, only two, and the Juggernaut tree. And this is to make my heavy attacks gain grit for the Warhammer. Uh, because I, until I have 300 strength, my light and heavy attacks don't have grit. So while I'm leveling and I'm using my weapons, this is kind of what I would be doing. I may even put these first. I may actually use hammer time and hardened steel first because I will be basic attacking a lot, right? Just using heavy attacks and light attacks. So using a heavy attack over and over and then making sure that they have grit helps a lot. It does a lot of damage, but I may do it later too. These abilities are really important. You can continue to go down, uh, kind of like this, increases damage with heavy attacks uh, under 30%, and then reduce Warhammer cooldowns by 7%. Because this, again, it's not really about the heavy attacks. It's mostly about getting your abilities out. That's the point. Because your Great Axe is your damage dealer. Your Warhammer is more of your debuffer. It still does a lot of damage. I would come back over here. Make sure I can heal myself with my abilities. And then it's kind of free-floating. You have you have some variety. Uh, I don't know what I would do. I don't think I need damage reduction. Must reduce combat. I'm so delayed. Thanks. Nah, see, I don't know how often that would be happening. And that's very niche. And I've been empowering my heavy attacks, not my light attacks. So that's something I guess you, you want to kind of pay attention to. You can, you can have light attack, heavy attack stuff. But you're going to make it harder on yourself. It's like, okay, I got to have this... I gotta 
Make sure I debuff him, light attack him here, then heavy attack him. Oh shit, I forgot I had to heavy attack first. Okay, well now I have to heavy attack, then do my ability, then light attack. Oh, I don't have my damage. My four second damage window isn't high enough for me to get all of that out. And now I have to come up with a new plan. I would really try to try to figure one set that you would go with. Uh, so with my hammer, it's heavy attacks, abilities. With my great axe, it's kind of abilities, but it's more utility and damage. Assumption when blocking this can be helpful, but why would you you can't block ranged and I don't believe you can block ranged and magic attacks with the warhammer. I think it's only with the shield. And just start buffing up all yeah, all of them play exhaust. Yeah, this is how I would do it. I would just buff up my damage after that. Because the more damage I deal with that Warhammer ability, the more I'm gonna heal myself. So I this is all about debuffs. The Warhammer's damage debuffs. While my Great Axe is, you kind of get them in. It's more duelist almost with this, with some utility, gravity well, and things like that. So I'm really bully. I'm really here to bully people. You know what I mean. In PvP, it, it's, to, it's to make them feel like they constantly have to run away from me and try to kite me. And the moment that I start walking away from them, they think they're safe. I flip around and just charge their ass. That is what I'm trying to go for. I don't have much mobility but I still have mobility and utility. One thing that makes me sad though, is when you're carrying a great ax and a war hammer, they don't go two separate ways. Like your first one goes from your right shoulder to your left hip and your left shoulder to your right hip on two. I think that would be amazing, but they, they take up the same spot. So it looks like you have a war hammer that just all of a sudden has like these blades on the end of them. Nah, it is what it is. But this, this will be my build. Attributes, again, for any that are just coming in. I would have 300 strength and dump the rest of my points in constitution. With the perfect If I had perfect gear. If I didn't have perfect gear, I'd have to rethink this. If I didn't have perfect gear and I just went with the points I had. I, my, my weapon abilities would still stay the same. So if I did not have my perfect gear, I think what I would do is go up to 150... And I would put the rest in constitution so that I had all healing consumables last 20% longer and 10% logging speed. Uh, the, the healing consumables lasting longer is the important part, I believe. While the strength, I, I need everything I can get from that. Uh, damage to heavy attacks, damage with light attacks, and then last, uh, stamina damage. If you could, I mean, it would be awesome to get as high as you can, but that, that's about as best as you're going to get. Perfect gear again, though. I would I would take this bitch all the way to Kingdom Come. By the way, you can go over 300. I am I don't know, but at least this site allows me to go over 300. If you wanted to be at the glasses, uh, glass cannons, literally, I guess you would call it a sand cannon at that point. You literally just pick it up and throw it. You can, it looks like. You would do a lot of damage, but you'd have no health. So I, I would not, I'm not going to do that. I would not recommend it. I am going to go with the 300 185. And I highly recommend these types of builds like 300 dexterity, 185 constitution, or you could do th uh, 300 dexterity, 185 intelligence. That will get you, really you only want to go up to 100. If you, Maybe you go up to 100 because I know musket, your, your dexterity and your secondary is intelligence. Most of these have magic or elemental effects, like 15% elemental damage. You can have a benefit for that. Mana after dodge, you're not using mana as a musket. So these are really magic duration to dot spells. Uh, damage to first hit on full target. I guess you could. Light and heavy magic attacks. See, that doesn't even matter. You don't even get a benefit until 100 intelligence for your musket. So uh, you could do something like this and not get constitution. Just go dexterity intelligence. I don't recommend it. I, I think something like this is healthy. You can, you can do always something like this, though. Only put in 100 constitution. This way you have the uh, health with your armor. And then you can put the rest of the points in your secondary scaling. Something like this. So I, I would do a little bit of extra. If I wanted to, I could take like a, a, a war hammer. And I don't know, a fucking spear or hatchet. You know, and just get some extra damage in there. But... This is my favorite. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, some new. I'm actually going to be releasing this video on YouTube just to talk about the things that happened. What am I doing?
Focus on all gathering professions. I'm going to be doing smel uh, smelting, stone cutting, and woodworking. Uh, I would probably be working the most, though, on stone cutting and secondary smelting. I should probably switch these two. In order, I want stone cutting first and smelting second. Uh, they are both really important, but if I had to choose one, I'd still do stone cutting because the orbs, tuning orbs to get into the expeditions are built through that, and there's timers and things that you need. Crafting is going to be so complex. It's going to take so much time, and I'm so excited because that's just so much more reason to keep playing the game. Weaponsmithing and armoring, I'm going to go with weaponsmithing the most. I want to be able to craft my great axe and my war hammer. That's the first roll of business. After I craft my spear, after I get those two weapons and I can craft my spear, I will start leveling up the workshop so I can craft my musket. Great Axe and Warhammer. I'm thinking about creating a company, me and Minimite. Uh, we may be playing on different servers, but we may have the same Discord that we would use to kind of talk to people across the two servers, Eastern and Western. And we're thinking of calling it Voth or Village on a Hill. I don't know if I'm guild leader material. I feel like I'm more, I'll take a part of the guild and I'll run it, but I don't want to be the head, but whatever, we'll see. And I want to have story nights. I want to be able to sit around a campfire in New World and we would be able to have story nights once a week or once every two weeks or something, or once a month, once every new moon, I don't know. But these, these are some of my New World plans when I'm in game. This is when I'm in the game. These are things that I want to do. This is not talking about out of game, what I'm doing outside of the game itself. And I'll be on a lot, maybe not even when I'm streaming and I'll be online. So I, I really hope to see some of you there. Now, now, I want to do some shout outs to some people. Lore Seekers or Lore Seekers Cast. I believe they are on Twitch. Highly, highly recommend these. These are the Lore Seekers. They, they really took the, how should I put this? There are three factions in New World. The Marauders, the Syndicate, and the Covenant. I'm going Covenant. They went Syndicate. So they're wrong. Morally, they still have a good service. So I'll let it slide. But the Lore Seekers uh, take the idea of the Syndicate of gaining knowledge and learning things and bringing all of those stories to you, kind of categorizing it real academic. They will bring that to us. And I highly recommend watching the Lore Seekers cast. They, they gave uh, me a list of them. I still haven't seen them, but I want to react to them. Uh, another one is... Here we go. To Eternum. Another really good one. Highly recommend them. They are also doing a lot... Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Always... Yeah, everyone knows. Everyone knows him. But Sir Medieval. He has great content. He puts content out on uh, pretty consistently. He's got... All the knowledge you need to know. Uh, love to be able to make videos like his. But great person to watch. There's some more. Ah, I'm, I'm forgetting. I got. This is bad. Oh, here we go. We got the Dungeon Crawler Network. These are just some of the few that I have been watching right now. And also trying to do my own stuff. So I highly recommend looking these guys up. They are all great people. They have great content for you to subscribe and watch. And they are also, some of them are on Twitch. You should look them up. I'll be posting on Twitter so you can see them there too. That's all I got for right now. I do have a little bit more, but it's more behind the scenes. So if you want to see more about my plans for like out of New World, I'm actually going to be setting up a Patreon. I, I have one just now set up, but I don't have much on it. I will be posting kind of like my behind the scenes. What am I planning to do? Those kind of things. And if you just want to support my channel or support what I do and you don't want Twitch to be taking so much of the proceeds, you can subscribe to my Patreon. And that would be a great benefit for me to keep doing what I'm doing. This is really what I wanted to go over. Just kind of my plans for New World. And this is really, really long. And I watched uh, too much. And we got, like, no information from New World. What's going on here? You you, you kind of dangle it in front of us. And then you say you have something exclusive. And all you're doing is really showing off your new skin that you already promised us. It's... You could do so much more. 
But it, I, it's okay. It's it's less than a month away. I get what they're doing. They're trying to build the hype. I am excited. And they are releasing an open beta. So you know what? We're still coming out as a win. But I thank you all for who came along. I, I'm going to go there and I'm going to put this on YouTube so people can watch. But New World, what, what are you looking forward to in New World? Are you looking forward to questing? Are you looking forward to the story? Are you looking forward to combat? Are you looking forward to fighting over forts and zones? Uh, or are you looking to just to kind of sit back, enjoy yourself, tell a story or two, sing Nickelback in the fucking settlement, catch a fish or a treasure chest or two, or throw it at your friend's face? You have a lot of options. What are you looking to do? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Tell me in the comments. Tell me on Twitch. Tell me on, Tell me everywhere. Tell me on fucking Twitter if you want. To. Let me know because I'd love to see what everyone has planned for this new world release. Thank you all and I hope you have a great rest of your day.